Doing the math, the max value here is $2,920, which isn't too bad at all and easily covers the annual fee of the card. The Chase Southwest Performance Business is one of the few S-tier cards of Chase and one of the best ones out there. Despite the potential to be overpowered and even break the system, it's not going to be for everyone. Today, we're going to look at the micro, the macro, and some other key benefits. Big favorite before we dive in is to give this a thumbs up to help with the algorithm. If you are someone new to this channel, then consider subscribing. Very slowly inching towards that 10k subscriber mark. The performance business does pretty well on the multiplier side. You're going to get 4x back on Southwest purchases, 3x back on Rapid Reward Hotel and Car Rental Partners, 2x back on Local Transit and Commuting, which is super broad and includes things like ride shares, passenger trains, buses, taxis, tolls, parking lots, and even garages. Also 2x back on social media and search engine advertising, 2x back on internet cable and phone services, and 1x back on everything else. In 2023, it's pretty fair to value Southwest points at 1.4 cents per point. Adjusting the numbers, this means that 4x is 5.6% in value, 3x is 4.2, 2x is 2.8%. If you are someone that likes Southwest points and you're looking for a catch-all chase solution, then this is a pretty good workhorse. For a lot of people, this is the rightful MVP because it can do so many things well. At the same time, there obviously is a catch, and it's the fact that there is a $199 annual fee. Luckily for us, there are a lot of things to help us offset this and make it substantially more reasonable, and maybe where you even get value on top. The first one, and probably the most material, is going to be the fact that you get 9,000 anniversary points. You get this on the first card member anniversary and every subsequent anniversary, so in year 2, 3, and onwards. 9,000 Southwest times 1.4 cents per point is 126 in value. So for our purpose, this already knocks down the annual fee. 199 minus 126 is a $73 effective annual fee. The next most quantifiable one is up to $100 in credits for global entry, TSA pre-check, or Nexus. Note that we do see this on a lot of other cards, and this is also only every four years. If you're someone that doesn't have this, then I think it's great, then you can value it, whether just in year one, or maybe distribute it over four years and kind of break that down. But if you are someone that has a booklet of cards with these features that you don't actively use, then you probably value that at zero. One of the more interesting ones is that you get four upgraded boardings every year. So this means that you get A1 to A15 boarding position and first access to seats and overhead bins. I'm pretty sure most people watching this know this already, but Southwest does operate on a first come first serve basis, which can be good if you are in an earlier boarding position. Not so good though if you are towards the back where you might be stuck in a middle seat. Upgraded boarding started 30 bucks and it depends on the popularity and the length of the route. On the top end, it used to be only 60 bucks but two weeks ago, they bumped this up to 80. So four of these at 80 bucks a pop is a maximum value of 320. I'm guessing that's for busier routes and the longer ones. In that case, we can take the $73 effective annual fee from before, minus 320 means that you get a negative 247 annual fee. Put another way, you're getting 247 in value by having this card if you value these perks. At the same time, on the low end of this, it's 30 bucks, so 120 in value. In that case, 73 minus 120 means that you're getting $47 in value. Okay, so we have the top range and the ideal range, but what's your range? Maybe I'm alone in this, but I don't think I would pay for this unless I was way far in the back. If I was in the late A's or early B's, I don't think I'd pay for this because that's still early enough for me to not be stuck in the middle seat. If I'm further back and it's a full flight, I'd probably pay 10 to 20 bucks depending on the flight and how I'm feeling that day. In that case, 4 times 15 is 60 bucks, 73 minus 60 is a $13 effective annual fee. And obviously that's my number and you need to adjust this for yourself. Maybe you do have that top end number, but for a lot of people, I think it's going to be something in between. There are some other superpowers I will talk about later in the video, but one key one is going to be the Wi-Fi credit. By having this card, you get 365 of these credits reimbursed for you every year. Normally, these run 8 bucks, and it's per device. For most of us, since we're not flying every single day, you might be wondering how to maximize this credit. I think the two most obvious are going to be employees and also co-workers. The ability to work while you're still in the air is pretty beneficial, even if it's just scheduling emails and getting back to people. You're probably not editing a video or coding, but there's a lot of those other miscellaneous tasks. I feel like in today's world, this is one of the easiest ways to earn brownie points with friends or maybe even random strangers, and the marginal cost to you might be zero. Doing the math, the max value is 2920 which easily covers the annual fee for the card. To be fair, I doubt most people would or even should value it at that level, but you kind of get how it feels broken. Best example from a few years ago was Mandy and I ended up winning an all-you-can-eat pass for a local sandwich restaurant. So could we eat there every day if we wanted to? Yes. Did we? No. The value prop was that you could do it if you wanted to if you weren't sick of sandwiches. 
Main takeaway to me, you're paying a $13 effective annual fee for a pretty good business card that has solid multipliers and also 365 Wi-Fi credits. On that note, if you do want to learn about cards, whether this one or pretty much any other card out there, we do have links on the website, asksebi.com slash business, and also down below in the description box. As always, make sure the offer is competitive, that the card makes sense for you, but otherwise, it is a huge way to support the channel, so thank you guys in advance. Okay, moving into the macro, I think there's two different levels. The first one's going to be with other Southwest cards, and the second one is with other airlines. Within Chase, the most obvious competitor is going to be the Premier Business. And in fact, we did a full video review on this if you want a bit more context. Main takeaway is that it has a lower annual fee and also less features. Unlike the performance business, I would argue that you're not breaking even there, so you do have an effective annual fee, you're not getting value on top. The multipliers are also weaker across the board for most categories, so Southwest you're only getting 3x instead of 4x. And you pretty much see this down the list other than local transit. If you don't care about multipliers, then maybe this doesn't matter, but for a lot of people, this is a workhorse. There also is a case of getting both of these or kind of flip-flopping between them if you want to test them, especially if they have very lucrative intro bonuses. Long term, I think the performance is a bit better unless you really don't like those other credits and maybe you're not getting value there. Another option within Chase is going to be the Southwest Priority. This is a personal card, so maybe it's not even a competitor for some people, but it's pretty strong. You do have the same multipliers for some categories, such as local transit and also internet cable and phone services. For the other ones though, like Southwest, the hotel and car rental partners, and also search engine and social media ads, it is a bit lower. At the same time, I still feel like that is an S tier card given the value prop of the perks. If you do want a bit more context, we did talk about it pretty heavily in the tier list video on the main Ask Sebi channel. Super fast, there is a 149 annual fee, but you have a ton of things to help you offset this. First is 7,500 anniversary points, so 105 in value. Number two is a $75 Southwest annual travel credit, and number three is four upgraded boardings, and at 15 bucks, that's $60 in value. The total here is 105 plus 75 plus 60 is 240 in credits. Even if you ignored the last one, it's still 105 plus 75, so 180. 240 or 180 in value for a 149 annual fee means that you're getting value on top just by holding the card. I think it's a solid pickup depending on what you're looking for, and if you are someone that cannot use some of the features on the performance card, then maybe that's the better pick. Also not unusual to have this card and the business cards just because of the intro bonuses and how people want to go for companion pass. Okay, back to the performance business, how does it compare to other airline cards? I'd say that it's pretty unique and that's both a good and bad thing. A lot of this ties back into Southwest and how they do business. For most other cards, the main draw is going to be a free checked bag and saving money on those fees. Unless you're flying international or you have status or you buy kind of a premium ticket, you don't get free checked bags. Southwest doesn't charge you for checked bags, so it's kind of apples and oranges. On the more premium end, the other airline cards give you lounge access. Southwest doesn't have lounges. So in that sense, you can't really compare them. I think if you are a Southwest flyer and that's your main airline, then this is a no brainer. Probably this one or the priority depending on your priorities. Compared to other airline cards, I think it is a better spender option. For example, if you look within Chase, the United Business gets you two X on a bunch of categories, but you're not really getting three or four X. Same thing with the United Club Business, which is a bit of a different card. You're getting 2x on United and 1.5x on everything else. Most airline cards are comparably weaker because the multipliers are not a focus. One big consideration is the space and how it's evolving. If you think about it, the perk that breaks the performance business and makes it S tier is the Wi-Fi credits. But if you look at other airlines like Delta, they're starting to offer this for free. United's probably a bit behind there, but still it's coming. You have to wonder whether Southwest eventually removes this fee. If everyone else doesn't charge for Wi-Fi, they can't keep charging because they're known as the airline that doesn't nickel and dime people. For example, everyone else charges for baggage while they don't. Everyone else charges for you to pick their seat and you don't have to pick your seat in Southwest. Okay, finishing up, let's look at three superpowers. The first one is that you can transfer points to other members and get up to $500 in fees reimbursed. On the surface, this doesn't sound like that big of a deal. Okay, cool, how much can this reasonably cost? Normally, you have to pay 10 bucks for every thousand points transferred. At 1.4 cents per point, a thousand points is 14 bucks. Put another way, you're paying $10 to transfer $14 in points. With this credit, it means that you can happily transfer over 50,000 points and not really get reamed on it. So 50K times 1.4 cents per point is $700 in points. This is super useful if you're transferring points to your player too, or maybe you're gifting points to an employee or a coworker. 
For example, I don't think this would be a bad holiday gift or even a performance bonus. Number two, you get 10,000 points towards companion pass. Reminder that these are points that are only towards status, not points that you can actively use. This is also a perk that's on the Southwest priority, so maybe not as much value, but still pretty useful if you do care about companion pass. I think it depends on the stage of your business. If you're someone that's still on the early end and maybe you're willing to get cards and kind of close them and stuff, then maybe that doesn't matter as much. But if you're spending your way to status using your business spend, then this can be helpful. The last one is that you can get 1500 TQPs, tier qualifying points for every $10,000 that you spend with no cap on this. You also do see this on the Southwest Priority and the Premier Business. Pretty useful though, if you do wanna spend your way towards A-list status. And there is a lot to dissect between A-list status and companion pass, but I feel like that's beyond the scope of this video. Main takeaway, this is a solid card if you are looking for catch-all workhorse. It does have an annual fee, but you get a ton of things to help you offset this and maybe even get value. Depending on if you care about Wi-Fi credits and earning brownie points of people, or maybe you just fly a lot, this can be an S tier and break the system. Again, if you do want to learn about this card, we have links on the website, asksebi.com business, and also down below in the description box. If you made it to this point of the video, then leave a horse emoji in the comments down below and I'll try to heart it and also respond. My question for you is what are your thoughts on the card? And also if you were debating it, would you get the lower annual fee premier business or would you go for the priority? Let me know and everyone else know in the comments down below. Big favor, give this a thumbs up, consider subscribing, but otherwise hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time.